Hello everybody, welcome back to the Endgame series. Hello Sai, hello Camelex, hello Pretty Hard. How are you all doing? So I am back and as I said, I will be going uh, to make an Endgame series today. I started to make it a little bit earlier, two hours before. But when I started the stream, my computer decided it's the best time to update my windows. So yes, I had to wait for it. Thank you for following. And now everything is fine and we can begin. So our today's topic is uh, in endgame series, we are look, going to look at some beautiful endgames, beautiful ideas and very original ideas also. <laughs> Yes, update. it started updating when I was on the stream. That's why I had to cut it short. But it's good that we had we had not started yet. So we did not see any any position then. Yes, Windows uh, is making a lot of problems. Okay, so let's begin. King g1, rook h2, pawn a5, b4, c4, black king e3, bishop f3, and pawns on a6, c6, g4, h3. This is a white to play and a draw. So these pawns are very dangerous going this side. you for following okay b5 the so black will take cb5 cb5 ab5 a6 b4 a7 b3 <laughs> Hello someday, my favorite teacher teaching end games. Yes, here we are back to end game series. Hello. Okay, so now we have to play b5. Otherwise, black will play bishop e2 here. And you see our rook will be quite trapped this side with no moves to play at all. And white will be in Zugzwang because if we play bishop e2, he can't move the rook and he just has to play king h1, king g1. Yeah, even bishop g2 is also possible, yes. So first we play b5, cb5, cb5, ab5, a6. b4. a7. The problem is that if we move the rook, let's say any time, any time if we move the rook at all, he will play g3. So let's say here we play rook b2, g3 and this is very dangerous. Hello Bughouse player. Hello Shibin. So that is why we cannot move the rook. Uh, now next move will be h2 and white has to give up the rook. Rook b3 check. Yeah, one second, one second. So first this is alright. Hello Timothy, nice to see you. Yeah, b5 is okay. cb5, 
a6 b4 a7 And here, yes, black does not play b3. Black plays bishop e4. Black plays bishop e4. And now what to do? Because black wants to hide with this king over here. So if your white plays rook b2, he will play g3. And after check goes to king f4. King f1. King f1 is also good. So here um, king f1 and just wait. We can wait like that. Hello Peter. <laughs> yes, king f1 is an idea. But also there is one interesting idea which forces black to, um, to go in that line. And here they say this example shows that where one side gives up what at first hand appears to be his strongest weapon. Welcome, biggest fan of Chobawa. <laughs> okay, so now uh, black plays bishop e4 and look at this move, a8. Brilliant move by white and he just gives up this pawn. And after bishop a8, he plays rook b2. And now the bishop is no more on e4 and he cannot hide. And after black plays g3, this check has to support this pawn, king f4. And now white just plays rook b2 and this is a draw because white just keeps the rook on the second rank and whenever black plays h2 he just takes it. Yeah that's all difficult yes. Thank you for following. Okay, so yes, bishop e4, rook b2 with a draw. But one second, let me see. So black cannot play h2 because white plays rook h2. What if black plays g2 followed by king g3? Oh, for g2, we just play king h2. And there is no way black can make progress because we are defending all the dark squares. Or we can even start checking from behind. In g5, pawn a2, b2, d4, d5, f6, and h4, black king g8. So today we are going to look at end games, uh, different end games. Not just one particular endgame. So first was rook versus bishop. This is pawn endgame. White to play and win. So white has two extra pawns. Thank you for following. Welcome. So how to break up in this position? So if white tries to go to the queen side, let's say like this, black will get in time and take this pawn. King h6, king h8. He will just keep playing these moves. This is a very nice idea 
King h6, push f5. So King h6, King h8, h5, King g8. Waiting move, okay, but I will also continue to play King h8 and King g8. And whenever white tries to go to the queen side, he will uh, come for f6. King g4, also King h7. <laughs> Long journey to c6, we need to calculate it. So let's let's quickly go to this moves. So if we go directly to c6, I think it will not be enough time for white. Black can just move away the king and start pushing this pawn. King e7 is also possible. King g6 and f5 and white is in trouble. h5 block king g6 h5 king h7 king f5 king h6 okay let's try h5 and with the same idea and in fact it will be a long time i can maybe play king e7 Or king g5. Uh, h5, king h7, king h4, king h6, king g4. Then king h7 again. Any attempt by the white king to reach the a5 pawn will be countered by black king moving towards the pawn on f6. Now here there is a beautiful idea. So we start with king f5, king h7, king e4, king g6, king d3, black takes this pawn and now instead of going to this side we come back again king e4 double exclamation mark and now the pawn does not exist on f6 and we can try to invade on the king side again. The king gives up his journey to the queen side and returns to his place on the king side. King g6, king f4. So still white is an extra pawn. And now, uh, slowly he will play h5 sometime. Black played f6. h5 check and white wins. Okay, one more variation. Uh, king f5, king h7, king e4, king g6, king d3, and let's say black does not take this pawn, and he goes king f5, but now it is uh, slow, king c4, king f6, king b5, and white wins. Yeah, now a uh, loss of one tempo and the weak queen at the same time and we have extra pawns yes yes and now if black goes king e7 i think we can take on f5 we can come back you see like this we are in the zone This is a very beautiful position. Next move. Next one. <laughs> Imagine your opponent's face. King a4. 
rook c7 rook g2 black king h8 pawns a2 c2 and rook d1 and this is a composition by maximovich ussr 1976 white to play and draw so these pawns are going this side Which book did the secret for today? So generally we uh, we are doing the endgame series from the Dovretsky's book but this is a special uh, special episode from another book. Why to play and draw? <laughs> Rook H2, King G8. Thank you for following Little Shield. We can give checks, but King will run one of the sides if you start giving this check king will try to run over this side if you give check here king will run over this side welcome new man in chess king b3 will be a1 queen yeah this is a composition this is a white to play and draw we are trying for a draw because of these pawns, these dangerous pawns. Isn't it perpetual? How do you do it? Welcome, Saksham Aurora. Rook C2. Uh, you, if you take rook c2 anyway, I will play a1 queen with a check. And if black manages to promote one of these pawns, then black is winning. We just keep checking with rook on c file. If black takes on g2, we take on c2. But there is an interesting line there. So you are thinking in right direction. So check, check and black has to go towards this side. And when he plays king h3, we can give this check. So rook c8 at seven this and if black wants to try for a win he has to go towards the rook check king h3 and interesting move Ivan. you suggested rook c3 and now if black takes the rook you takes this and this but what if black plays here rook d3 Thank you for following Adit. What to do now? Because now if we take on d3, he plays king takes g2. Rook d2 then king starts moving, starts running. Rook h2 try to sack that rook to get rook c2 with check. Very nice, very nice. Rook h2 check. Now we just go behind the king. Now king cannot take this rook because we take this pawn and again it's a check and we take this pawn. And look at this beautiful idea. We just keep giving checks. And when he goes to this side we start giving check from this side. <laughs> and there is no way white can, um, black can win this game. It's a draw in this way. Look at this geometry of these rooks. Yes, very cool example. 
and he cannot bring the rook in between so here yeah king f3 rook f2 and there is no way to bring the rook anyway in between and that's how white makes a draw this is so beautiful Now next is a difficult one. King d1, knight e2, pawns on e5, f2, g5, h4, black king d8, knight d7, pawns on a4, b3, c7 and d4. This is a composition by Dorogov uh, in 1976 and this got a first prize for composition in the Shakhmati magazine. Why to play and win? So the position is um, symmetrical as you see the pawn structures they are like mirror to each other but the um, thing is that black is more forward white has three squares black has just two squares so be careful g6 then b2 and now if you play king c2 he plays d3 check and white is in trouble yes white to play and win king will go this is what will happen if you try to defend it like this d3 check and what to do after that Yes, this pawn is far more advanced, so black's pawn is far more advanced, but he, white's king is a little bit nearer than black's. Thank you, Robotrock, for following. King c1. He will take this pawn. So look here what happens this is not so easy and this will convert into a pawn endgame eventually so g6 is correct b2 and now white plays knight c3 interesting move to so stop this so we are stopping the queen when black takes we play king c2 the black pawns are stopped temporarily and now black has to handle the white pawns. Hello Mr. Sabon, welcome. Black plays king e7. g7. And now the same trick on black, you see. If black plays king f7, white plays e6. So black has to play knight f6. With the same idea. Check and king f7. h5. King g8. Okay, doesn't matter king g8 or a3. It will soon transpose. Because white plays h6. 
a3 in b1 look at this position it's exact same position for both sides now a black can't move the king because if he moves here we have h7 if he moves king h7 we have f7 that is why he has to move the pawn he has two moves c6 or c5 so it depends on black's move if we play c5 we play f4 so he tries to play c6 f3 c5 f4 c4 f5 and they say has black run out of moves because he cannot move the king but now he can sacrifice this pawn c2 check king capture c2 if we play c3 we can go back king b1 and black is in zugzwang but here he plays this move king a b1 queen and c3 now white again cannot move the king because if he moves here c2 this way so white has to do the same idea on black f7 king f7 g8 queen king g8 and f6 a mutual zugzwang and now black loses because it is his turn to play and he must allow the promotion of one of these pawns and black uh, resigns or black loses wow this was really crazy <laughs> so it started from this position you see from this position and both the sides have same ideas yes today we are celebrating beautiful end games thank you for following in h2 queen c2 bishop e2 pawns on d2 g3 black king h6 queen a8 bishop c8 pawn on b6 and g5 dvoretsky <laughs> no this is not dvoretsky Why to play and win? By the way, yesterday we had a great stream. We played an adoption match versus another streamer, Mustard Fuzz, and it was a it was a match of five games, all ten plus zero, and I won all the games and adopted Mustard Fuzz. <laughs> that was cool. Did you record the games? Yeah, they are on my Leeches profile or you can just visit my yesterday's stream. We played on Leeches. Bishop h5, King h5. Hello, mild reflections. Shakhmati fundamental? <laughs> no, this is not chess fundamental. Yes, you are absolutely right. So, everybody found this move. Bishop h5. Well done. Now, idea is queen g6 mate. 
and black cannot stop this checkmate so black has to take the bishop and now we force this line queen h7 check king g4 queen h3 check and now we win the queen and white wins well done but interestingly did you observe that if this is black to play black can also do the same thing so this is like a you know Sug Zhuang. if this is black to play black plays bishop h3 king h3 queen h1 king g4 queen h5 king here and queen this and takes white's queen so it is like whoever moves wins This one is very beautiful also. Thank you Wasim for subscription. Thank you so much. In G1, Bishop C1, uh, Pawn B6, Pawn C5, Pawn F7, Black King A8, Knight E6, on f6 f5 b7 and c6 yes that's why a position is important a position is very important in end games especially pawn end games white to play and win so this pawn is queening Bishop h6, but the idea is that even if we play bishop h6, for example, if we play bishop h6 here, he will just move the king and we can get the knight in this variation, but this is a draw because the king just runs a8 and b8 and you can get these pawns but you cannot win the resulting endgame after that. I will just quickly play the moves one second. And even if we bring the king, you can just play king c8 or king a8, just go inside. And no way to make an improvement here because we cannot, we can never play these moves because it's a stalemate. That's why um, winning the knight is not enough. Thank you for following. Bishop f4 looks interesting, forcing black to not bring the king out. Bishop f4, there is knight d8. Yes, Ivan. Then queen, and we have to shake hands in draw, Mr. Sabun, because it's a stalemate. Look at this, bishop f4, black plays this interesting defense, knight d8, and now if we make a queen, it's a stalemate. <laughs> oh no. Okay, so now let's, let's continue. So here, we make a knight. Yes, we have to make a knight, otherwise black just takes the pawn and... Um, then it will be a draw. So we can't make queen or rook, so we have to make a knight. Black plays knight e6. <laughs> Sick. And actually, black is forking these two pieces. So 
again knight g6 right what else we have to keep the knight so we have to keep play knight g6 because now if we takes instead of bishop we have knight and that changes the result of the position so uh, knight g6 he goes knight f8 If black manages to keep the bishop, then uh, he is making a draw. If white manages to keep the knight, he is winning. Knight h4. Okay, knight g6. Knight g2, knight h4. <laughs> Knight e3, knight g2. Knight capture f5, then I will take the bishop and it will be a draw. This is a composition by Vlasenko, 1983, and this received a second prize in some composition uh, tournament. <laughs> okay, and now here, white plays a brilliant move, knight d5 and wins so now let's see what is happening he can't take here because this and now the difference is that he has to take this and pawn no longer stands on c6 which was a fortress for black and now white takes this knight and we know that this end position is winning because white will grab all these pawns and then bring the king this side and at the right point play c6 and it's not a stalemate because he has to play this and then he brings the king okay i will play quickly till the end so let's say here okay so black just tries to give up the pawns doesn't matter how then the king gets near Black has to just keep playing in the corner, otherwise if he comes out, white just simply plays bishop f4 and stops him from going back again. And here, now there is no pawn on c6 and this changes the entire course because white plays c6 and after black takes this, plays king c8 and it's not a stalemate because black has moves to play and then b7, b8 wins for white. That pawn on c6 was the big difference. So the answer is this, bishop f4, knight d8, then f8, knight. And knight d5 wins. Okay, king h3, uh, queen e8, bishop f3, pawn g4, 
and h2 black king g7 queen c4 a knight e6 pawns a6 d6 f4 g5 h6 hello sukish welcome this is a game position not a composition uh, played in poland championship 1967 between sliwa versus doda and white to play and draw Queen d7, king f6. White to play and draw because here black has three extra pawns. Queen e7, king g6, or king g8. Both are possible. So here black can play back. And then for this go knight f8 or go king g6 yes yes name of the book is secret queen e7 check first we have to try giving checks now black has two two sides to go now king g8 and king g6 so if he goes king g6 we give this check and after black takes queen e4 we have to find the best check and that is to play queen g7 or even queen f7 right queen f7 is also possible but not uh, queen e6 this is because queen takes and the king has square this side Queen at 7 also, yes. <laughs> queen f7, queen g7, queen at 7. And this all is um, okay. And here, if black plays king g8, queen e8, and try to defend this check with knight f8, we again play this move, bishop d5. And after queen d5, just queen f8, and offer the queen again. I'm not playing games right now, Sukish. This is a training series. So some other time. I have special streams for playing. White to play. And this is a game position between Capablanca versus Lasker. So two world champions playing, played in Berlin 1914. Wow, during World War. this is a training series it's not about mood this is a training series so I'm not playing I told you I will play in different streams hello chess to go white to play and win so if white takes the knight it's a stalemate and if white plays the rook anywhere else, because black is also attacking the rook, if anywhere else, black will just take this pawn and it will be a draw. So yes, rook a8, double exclamation mark. And we are just sacrificing the rook. If king capture a8, then king c7 and we win this 
because this is a winning pawn endgame. And next we take this pawn. And if black takes with the knight, king c8 and black is in zugzwang. He has to play this only move knight c7 and again leads to win for white. And white wins. Okay, king f3, rook h7, bishop h8, pawn g6, king g8, rook f8, pawn f7. Another composition, this is by Kozlovsky in 1931. White to play and win. You're going to get the next puzzle. Yeah, rook g7 is not made, king h8. Bishop f6, I will take this pawn. And the rook and bishop both are under attack. Tarun, your variation does not make sense at all on all levels. First of all, rook f7, he can just take. Then you say rook f7, king h8, rook h7. It is you check on you. So, which variant of chess you are playing? And then g7, how is winning even that? <laughs> Yes, okay, okay, I'm sorry. So you mean to rook g7. You are absolutely right. Rook g7, king h8. So Tarun has found the answer. Rook g7, king h8, rook h7, king g8 and g7. Now the bishop does not exist on h8 and this makes a big difference because now black cannot take the rook, there is queen. And when the rook moves, there is rook h8. Before it was not possible because of our own bishop. And here we take this rook and win. King e5 White to play and win 
So both the pieces are under attack. This and this. <laughs> How will I remember all these beautiful tricks? This is a composition by Affect in 1978. And this uh, got a prize, a second commendation in Team 64 tournament for composition. Knight P2. So he cannot take this because we take and then we are winning. So after Knight C2, he will play Knight B3. Knight e3, knight. One second. Thank you, Chelsea Monica, for raiding once again and welcome, raiders. Shout out to my good friend, Chelsea Monica. And Monica, are you going to play Title Tuesday? today because i know that i see your streams and you generally play every time Okay, so Tarun says knight c2, knight b3, then knight e3. Knight e4, king f4. Oh, this is a very nice variation. Look here, if we play knight c2, black plays knight b3, and after knight e3, black has an amazing resource, he plays knight a5. And now we are attacking here, here, and if white defends it with the king like this, he just takes this pawn, and next he takes the bishop and makes a draw. You're playing 2000 rated players in leeches arena why you can defeat them why not we have knight a1 instead of knight e3 so first move knight c2 knight b3 knight a1 thank you single malt he will take it knight capture a1 bishop a4 yes yes excellent work so knight c2 is right he cannot take it because we just take and play king d5 so knight b3 and the brilliant c is here knight a1 fantastic move black takes the knight and now bishop a4 this knight is restricted king c3 king d5 king b4 and just bishop d1 and black is in Zugzwang and every move he can and every move he make loses and white wins King h4, rook c2, bishop b1, pawn on c5, d3, e3, king f5, queen g8, pawns d7, e6, f6. Black 
right to play and win. Hello James Splinter. Just back home and see you streaming. <laughs> Thank you so much. Right to play and win composition by El Cubel in 1917. Hi Sabrina. <laughs> Sabrina, you're funny. Yes, this one is cute. So we have to start with rook f2. Rook f2 check. Now black king cannot go to g6 because rook g2 and we take the queen. King e5. Hello, roller coaster. Thank you for the cheer, Sabrina. And now what to do after king e5? You have already solved this, yes? Yes, yes, rook f5 is the brilliant move. Now black has two moves to take with the king or with the pawn. So if he takes with the king, d4 is in fact checkmate. So nice, d4 is checkmate. And if black takes with uh, the pawn, now we give this check and he goes to d5 or e6, king e6. Bishop a2 check, trying to win the queen. And after d5, we just play n person. And next move, we take the queen and win. King h5, bishop b2, knight c1, pawn g4, pawn h7, rook b4, bishop d1, white to play and win, the pawn is going here. Yes, don't confuse the pawns. This pawn is going here and black pawn is going this side. This is a white to play and win. in a moment
So what is happening? Yes, so first of all, if we make a queen here, h8 queen, black will play rook capture g4. And next move, white is losing this queen because there is no square for white to move the queen, right? Let me check. Black is threatening discovered check. If we place queen takes pawn we can give this check and play this and black will draw this position so now look at this um if king h4 then he can take this pawn, I guess, or just defend here. So first we have to play bishop d4 check. Bishop d4 is right. Now idea is to make queen. So if black moves the king, we just make a queen anyway. So black will take the bishop. Now h8 queens. And now the same idea, but now this time the bishop is not on a1. So we get this square for the queen, white plays queen a1 and after black gives this discovered check, rook a4, look at this beautiful move, knight e2 check and white is winning. <laughs> yes, this is a beautiful idea. The bishop is pinned so it cannot take it and next move white will defend the queen and just take the bishop. Yes, cool one. Thank you for following. DJ Punk Let's Party. <laughs> cool username. Alright, King F8. Pawns on G4, G6, H7. King on G5, Knight H8. Bishop B6 and Bishop C6. <laughs> Look at this endgame. This is a white to play and draw. The pawns are going this side. White to play and draw, and this is a composition by Fater in 1938. G7 Bishop <laughs> Its notation is confusing Bedtime, have a great stream Rucha And I'll be safe Thank you so much Basim for joining And have a good night This is um, white to play and draw So G7 Bishop C5 
And after King D8, what about Bishop D4? <laughs> is this wrong? No, this is right. Okay, so first move we have to play g7 because otherwise he can just take it. So g7, threatening to queen in one of these ways. Bishop c5 check. King g8. And now black plays this move, bishop d4. And if now here we make a queen, he plays bishop check and next move he takes the queen like that. So that is why we have to make a knight here. Gh8 knight. And after black gives this check, now we play knight f7. And for king g6 we make another knight and white makes the draw. Next one is also nice one. King d7, black king e5, pawns on a3, c5, black has so many pawns, e6, g5, white has only one, h6, and a bishop h7. And look at this, this is a white to play and win. From a study by Lurie and Mitrofanov in 1983 USSR. So white pawn is going this side, black pawns are going here. Why not knight g6 after g7? Then white will start running with the king. Uh, king f7 I guess. And now two pawns will be dangerous to hold. Bishop f5 here. King f6. So black will try to stop the pawn by moving the king. Thank you for following. King e7, black plays a2. Okay, so uh, DJ Punk says Bishop F5, uh, then King F6, Bishop B1, also King F6. So Black's plan is uh, straightforward, he wants to play King F6 and even if you hold this next move he will play A2 
and take this pawn with king g6. And white is not winning there. White, white to play and win. Um, can you write again, Taru? I I I mixed somewhere. How will White win this? Looks impossible. King e7, a2, bishop c2, h7. But why he, will he play g4? He will make a queen, right? King e7, a2, and after bishop c2, he will make the queen. Because you still your pawn is still on h6. And then if you play h7, I can start giving checks. Hello, Daksh, how are you doing? Bishop g6, king f6. So black's move is clear, king f6. If you move the bishop. <laughs> g swords, you are one move behind in that variation. Check again, because your pawn is still on h6 when I make the queen. Hello, Espino. Thank you, witness, for following. Como estas? Bishop g8. King f6. If bishop capture this pawn, I will go towards this side and make a draw. Okay, see you again. Raksh. This is a brilliant position. I'm also doing well. Please don't tell answer. Bishop b1, first move, then king f6. Bishop e5, you mean bishop e4, also king f6. King e7, then a2. <laughs> this is a very beautiful position and also quite unbelievable. Alright, I will tell now. So first we move the bishop and now the square is very important as you will see soon. And the best square for the bishop is to play e4. Bishop on e4 and you will see why. Black plays king f6, trying to go towards this pawn. And now we play king e8. We are controlling all these squares. Black plays a2. 
And now no rush, white just plays king f8. Black makes a queen. At 7 and now the bishop is controlling this square and now next move no matter what white plays h8 and it is either checkmate or we are winning the queen. There is no defense for black in this last position. <laughs> Look at this beauty. It's a checkmate. One second, isn't there e5? e5 queens, king e6. Has to be winning because they just stop here. Has to be something very easy. Queen at 6, Queen C8, Queen C6, then King D8. So let's let's quickly see. There has to be some mate. They say that black either loses the queen or there is checkmate. So now where is the checkmate here? Hmm. Why don't I see the checkmate? Queen g8 King Do you see the checkmate? Or we can take help of stockfish Queen h7, just play simple. Queen g7 and queen e7. Yeah, looks like that because anyway, black does not have any checks. Let's check with this. Okay. And bishop f5. And I think queen g7 was also winning. No, there is queen f1 check. So let's not give time for checks. He gives this check and plays queen f6. So it's better we checkmate in 4. Next position, we have seen this already in our episode on um, night and games. But still, let us see it again. White to play and win.
so the question is to play king f6 and play this pawn and game or play h7 and play this this pawn in game so we have a choice we can have our king on h6 or h7 e5 first move so black will take on h6 first If c5, I think black can take and then take here. Have to be very careful. And what is the difference? First move h7 or first move king g7? One of them is correct. g7 h7 he will take here knight h6 and then we need to calculate this end game c5 he will take we will make a queen and resulting in a queen end game Okay, so h7, the striking simplicity of the position is misleading. In fact, utmost accuracy is required from both sides. Now black has to play knight f6, this, and now, which move is better for black here? King c3, king d3 or king e3? So of course not king c3 because then uh, the king will be in the way of this pawn. So if king c3, you see that the pawn, um, the king is in the way. What about king d3? King d3 is also a mistake because now white plays c5, captures b6. Now it's a pawn race. And here you see that after black plays c2, white plays queen f4 and next move plays queen c1. And wins. That is why black has to play king e3 here to stop that. With the idea king d4. The same line c5. And now what to do here? So remember it is a bishop spawn. So if we simply play like bishop uh, queen b2, black will defend it and make a draw. Now this square is controlled by the king on e3. Yes, queen h2, excellent. Queen h2 and now you see the king difference on first move. If the king was on h6, this would not have worked. We are attacking the pawn here. And if black makes a queen, queen h6, winning the queen and also the game. That's why it's important to have our king on h7 on move 1. And if black plays something else like king d3, also queen at 6 and next move queen c1 and white wins thank you for following Christoph.
Why to play and draw? From a study by Nietzsche in 1960. So pawns are going this side. Why to play and draw? Rook b6 is not possible because bishop b6. Rook c1, Rook c2 with Rook a2, Rook c2 then black will queen, Rook a2 then queen takes. Rook c8, so that if black gets a queen we can go Rook a8, Rook b8. One second. Okay, let me think about rook c8. <laughs> James Pondra knows everything. Of course he does. No, rook c8 is not possible, of course, because uh, b1 queen, rook a8 and king here and bishop goes to b6. No, he will just queen and the bishop is uh, controlling b6. Rook c4 followed by rook b4. Rook c4, king a3. Or just king b5 yes king b5 thank you for following yes and then if rook b4 king takes b4 okay so first move rook c1 is a mistake actually Rook c1. Now black cannot take and make a queen or a rook because it's a stalemate. Because it's a stalemate. So black will make a knight here. And now if king takes this. Knight check. And knight just stays on f4. Defending the pawn and slowly the king will be brought to king side. And black will win this. Thank you for following. Thank you, we know. Rook a6, king b5, rook a2, then queen.
Yes, this is white to play and draw. So rook c1 is a nice idea but it does not work because black makes the knight and then brings the knight towards this side and defends the pawn. So we just have to use this idea in a different way. White plays rook a6 and now the king moves anywhere, doesn't really matter. And we just play rook a1 with the same idea but now the knight will be far away. Black cannot take it and make a queen or a rook because it's a stalemate. There is no squares for the king, it's a stalemate. So the most black can try is to make a knight. And king takes bishop and now knight does not defend this pawn on h3. And we take this and make a draw. Yeah, if he makes the bishop, it will be wrong color and it will be a draw. King c1, rook a1, bishop a7, pawn c2, king a8, knight c3, knight c4 and pawn on h2. White to play and win. From a study by Patchman in 1980 and this position got first prize in composition tournament. White to play and win. This pawn is queening right here. Hello X-Ray Poker, this endgame series is from the Dovratsky's chess book but today I am using from different sources. Bishop g1 looks very natural move, bishop g1 check and next move we take the pawn right? But it is not so easy. It is not so easy. Thank you for following GM Road. Yes, there is a reputation for Bishop G1, of course. Okay, I will show you the reputation. So if we play bishop g1 first move, this check and trying to win this pawn over here. Black plays the move king b8. King b8. Now white has to take this pawn. Check. And now is the big question, what will white play next? It is a zooks wong. White does not have a move for his rook on any square and the bishop does not have any square to play because if he goes here or here or here there is knight fork and it's a zugzwang 
and white cannot win this after If you lose the bishop, then it's not winning. Why not bishop d4? Then I will play king b7 and this pawn is queening, that's why. Bishop d4, king b7, and now how to defend this pawn? Okay, James Plunder, good luck. Bishop f2. So now black can play king b8 or king b7. Okay, so bishop f2 is actually right. Bishop f2. If bishop b8, then black takes with the king. So bishop f2 is right. Now black has two moves, king b8 or king b7. If he plays king b7, we just play this check and next move to rook goes to h7. And white is getting the pawn and also not losing the bishop. Rook a7 and rook h7. So best black can try is to play king b8. Now bishop g3, king b7. And we have reached exact same position like before, but this time it is black to play. And this is the big difference in this position. If we go bishop g1 and bishop h2, it was white to play. But now black to play and black is in Zugzwang. And white wins because of material advantage. Can you repeat what happens after rook a7? Rook a7, one second. So bishop f2, if king b7, we give this check and when the king moves anywhere, we just play rook h7 and take this pawn. And here black is in Zugzwang because he has to move one of the pieces and white will not lose the bishop like in the previous lines. And he will free his pieces very soon. So his rook and bishop were quite trapped if it was white's move. But now black has to move one of his pieces and then he will free his pieces and will win using his material advantage. And no longer lose the bishop on h2. This is going to be very fun next position. King e1, bishop a5, rook h2, knight h3, on b6, c6, black king d8, knight e7, bishop a8. And this is a white to play and draw. Composition by Sadikov, USSR 1968. One second, I forgot to put the queen. One second.
thank you for following. Okay, black has a queen on h5. This is why white has to make a draw. White to play and draw. <laughs> yes, why, why will white make a draw if black does not have the queen? So these pawns are going this side. And they said there is a surprising and pleasurable finale to the study. So see that this bishop is under attack. So if we play b7 check, he will take this and also check to our king. Knight g5, queen g5. If c7, then king c8. From b7, queen a5, rook d2, so one second, b7, queen a5, rook d2 check, I will play king c7. After rook d2, black plays king c7. This is white to play and draw. This is very pretty. Rook d2 and if king c8 then b7. Interesting. So rook d2 I have to go king e8. But that was also nice mate that you were planning Bob. b7 bishop b7 and rook d8. Where do you make knight, Anup? When do you make ba8 knight? In which line? b8 knight then, okay I see, queen a8. Queen versus rook and knight.
Group D2, yes, King E8. But uh, easily I can just also play King C6 instead of taking it there, but one second. In that line white is losing the rook one second so let's just play and see so if b7 queen a5 rook d2 in c7 we take here in e2 and they say this is winning for black because black will pick up pieces so this does not work yes queen f6 is threatened and if uh, king here then this check and picks up the rook okay in uh, in some cases black black picks up the rook anyway thank you for zin so we don't need to calculate all the lines in that in that last in that last position <laughs> this is very tricky so i will show you the answer uh, so first is knight g5 thank you oyster boy welcome now we are attacking the queen and of course black cannot take the rook because of b7 so only move black has it is to take this knight queen capture g5 rook h8 check Knight g8. Now what to do after this? Rook g8, then queen g8. Then b7, king e7. Now find the draw here. Why right to play and draw? If you play directly b7, this takes with a check. This is really unbelievable, unbelievable position. So now b7 is not possible because queen a5 check. So white plays rook capture g8 check. Black takes queen g8. And now do you believe that this is going to be a draw? b7. King e7. Now what to do? It's it looks like it's completely losing for white, isn't it? Bishop d8 and queen d8. <laughs> he 
yes yes you are right so bishop d8 check look at this line bishop d8 now black cannot take the bishop with the king because of this he cannot move the king anywhere else because of again this so he has to take with the queen queen takes d8 and now white plays c7 and unbelievably this is a draw because black cannot stop both the pawns at the same time look at this there is no check on white king and how to defend this <laughs> hello live for chess <laughs> yes c7 and white makes a draw because there is no defense for black after this and white takes one of the pieces and makes a queen King h1, bishop g2, bishop d6, pawn c7, black king c8, queen d7, bishop g1. Yes, very interesting in games, right? Why to play and draw? From a study by Anu Friv. Second prize, Shakhmati, 1980. Thank you for following. I'm homeless on Wi Fi. <laughs> Funny username. Why to play and draw? Sorry, Anup, I already changed it to the next one. If you want, you can go back again uh, later in the stream and uh, see it. Mm, yes, very good. Thank you, Mosin, for following. So look at this beautiful idea white plays first move bishop h2 white's position is uh, hopeless besides being to a massive disadvantage massive material disadvantage he is also unable to leave the bishop protecting his pawn it's hard to believe that there exists a saving move but in reality um, this is beyond imagination Bishop h2 double exclamation mark. He is even daring to offer an exchange of pieces. Black has two possibilities to take on h2 or just move back the bishop. And in both the cases, so it doesn't matter if black takes the bishop or just moves it back. White plays this nice move bishop h3, pinning this and after queen h3, it's a stalemate. Hello, Mosin.
Okay, just a second. Maybe next one you know already. This is a famous position. King a7, black king a5, rook h4, knight h8, black knight g3, black pawns on e2, c5, white pawns a2, b3, c4. And this is in fact white to play and draw because the pawn is going this side. Composition by Selman in 1939. White to play and draw. Any of you have seen this already or not? You have seen this, it's white to win, I think. No, it's white to white to play and draw. Because black has always the option of running with the king. Okay, so if you have not seen this, you are in for a treat. Yes, that is a nice observation that black king is... Um, does not only has one square. Thank you, Slingy. Rook e4, the knight e4. Yes, if knight is on c6, it's going to be a mate. You have good observation, Bob. Then e1 queen after knight g6. Thank you for following pause pause for thought <laughs> it does not look like white has time to play a3 rook h6 and rook a6 yes because queen and then black will start giving checks Yes, TJ Punk, you are absolutely right. The first move is rook e4. Now stopping the pawn for now. Knight capture e4. And now we play knight e6. Knight g6. Knight g6 and after this move, queen, knight e5. So you see why first move was played. Because um, before it was not possible, queen was controlling this square. And now the threat is knight c6 mate. And... There is no way to defend this mate except to play king b4 and fall in this knight fork. And then that is going to be a draw. So no defense against this uh, knight c6. This and this and that is why it's a draw, not a win for white.
Thank you for following. Rook h7 and rook b7 wins. Where? Rook h7, then I will make a queen. Then rook b7. One moment. Looks interesting. But I can still play queen b4 to make a draw. So this is the mate, so I can play queen b4 and give up the queen and make a draw. One second. Um, is there any other way for black? After rook h7? Looks like this this looks like second solution. Let me let me confirm with the help of this. Yeah, rook at seven is actually us. Wow, <laughs> we found a reputation to this example. Look at this. We found a reputation, congrats! Congrats very much for finding rook h7. So we found a reputation to this puzzle which is given in this book. To this composition actually. Okay, so we found a reputation. This uh, solution is wrong. Well done, Homeless on Wi-Fi, for finding it out. Thank you, Polar Bear, for the donation of $25. Thank you so much for the support. And I hope you're enjoying these streams. But I'm so happy that we found a reputation to this. Now this is not Dobretsky's book, this is uh, actually an old book with studies and things. Good night Anup, see you next time. enjoyed that's great 
ओके किंग एच एट रुक एफ सेवन पॉन ई सेवन किंग एच वन नाइट जी फोर बिशप सी सेवन क्वीन ए सेवन एंड दिस इज अ वाइट टू प्ले एंड ड्रॉ अ कंपोजिशन बाय नदारेश बिली फर्स्ट प्राइज इन नाइनटीन सेवेंटी फाइव फॉर दिस कंपोजिशन वाइट टू प्ले एंड ड्रॉ <laughs> yes So this pawn is going this side and if e8 queen black is threatening to play bishop e5 Right one second let me um Thank you, Anglo Sachin, for the raid, and welcome everybody. Hope you had a great stream. Hello, Anglo Sachin. How are you doing? We are having an endgame series and uh, solving endgame positions. Thank you. Thank you for the follow. Got a new monitor. Yes, that would be a really good thing to have good um, equipment for streaming. So I will look forward for your more streams. Okay, sure. Have a great day. And thank you for dropping by and for also for the raid. <laughs> yes, you're very good. Homeless on Wi-Fi. So now e8 queen, we make a queen. So black will play bishop e5 check. And I was just trying to figure out what happens after a king g8. If king h7, there is knight f6 check, winning the queen. And if king g8, there is knight h6. Okay, anyway, so uh, white plays queen e5 now. The queen is under attack and now black plays queen a8 check. Trying to get the queen away and now the threat is to play knight capture e5. And here we play this nice move, rook f8. Look at this crazy position. All white pieces are under attack. Black can't take here because of rook a8. And after queen f8, king f7. Black cannot take the queen because it's a stalemate and white makes a draw.
Okay, let's see if anybody finds the next one. King h2, queen e8. Bishop h6, rook g5. King f4, black queen f1. Rook h7 and bishop c7. From a study by Gurgenitz. And this actually received first prize in 1985. White to play and draw. Uh, two batteries, one white, one black, are ready to operate. The difference between them is apparent. The white battery has no real power because of the white's bishop pin. So this bishop is pinned. On the other hand, black's threat of king f3 looks very dangerous. So black is threatening to play king f3 with this check. So black is threatening king f3 and also rook h6. This is under attack. Thank you for following long shot. Yes, king f3 is discovered check. That is why this is a white to play and draw. You also know this, yes? Thank you for following Florin Magnus. You are very strong, homeless on Wi-Fi. I saw this one, but I forgot. Yes, it happens to all of us. <laughs> we are in the stalemates chapter, yes. And that is also a big hint for this position. Thank you for the follow. Rook e5. So this is a check. I will play rook h6. Queen e5 and rook g3. Then rook takes h6. Rook g1. Black will take this and it's a check on white. <laughs> the homeless on Wi-Fi has given us a hint. It's about stalemate. Thank you so much, Perkovsky. That's too much, but okay. <laughs> Queen a4. But remember that whenever you give check, black will play king f3 and it is check on you. And black is winning. Yes, Ivan, you found it. So look at this line. Look at this line. Go with me. The first move is queen e3 check. Now black has only one move to play and that is to take the queen. Only move. 
Now it is check on us. And now we give him this check, rook g3 check. So he cannot take this because it's a double check this time. Rook and bishop both double check. And now it doesn't matter what black plays. L really doesn't matter even if he plays queen f3 or anywhere. King e4, it's a stalemate. Okay, sorry. I'm sorry. He can't play queen f3. <laughs> it's a double check. I'm sorry. It's a double check. So he has to move the king. And it doesn't matter where he moves the king. This Any of this square, it's a stalemate. Look at this end position. Such a brilliancy this is. And this is all forced. So first move queen e3 and just rook g3. Just Solution is just two moves. And after that, it's a stalemate. Hi player, how are you? King h8, queen e8, uh, rook b1, pawn g4, black king h6, Queen g1, rook h3, rook f6, pawn g5. Yes, we are doing endgame series today and looking at some beautiful examples. This is a way to play and win. From a study by Silev in 1983, and this also received first prize in the Shakhmati magazine. Why to play and win? Of course, this queen is under attack, but it's not so easy. Remember, this is why to play and win. I need some water. Just a minute. I will bring some water.
So anybody found it so far? Why Rook G N doesn't work is yes, you're right. So first of all, Rook G one does not work because uh, Black plays Rook F eight and Queen F eight, King G six, and find this beautiful stalemate. So this is a stalemate. That's why it will be a draw. So just taking the Queen is not it. Rook b7. Rook b7, uh, let me think. What about rook f8? Queen f8, king g6. King g8, rook h8. King h8, then queen check and again give queen as a sacrifice, giving up everything, all the pieces. Trying to make a stalemate. Yes, rook b7 is a good idea. Rook b7 with the idea this checkmate. So rook b7 is right. And now for black only way to defend is to try to sacrifice the rooks. So he starts with rook f8 check. Queen capture f8. King g6 check. King g8. Rook h8 check. yes and here is the important point because now not king g7 of course black is not threatening to take this because you have um, if i take the rook it's just winning like this it's a mate so black will not take the rook black is threatening to play queen h8 queen h8 is the threat and if takes then there is a stalemate that's the real threat so here white plays queen at six a brilliant move by white King at 6 then there is rook at 7 winning the queen and after queen at 6 king g8 the next move will be rook b6 and white is winning because there is no defense against rook b6 it's going to be a mate so only way to defend the mate is to play king f6 and then losing the queen after rook at 6 only way to defend is this and then we win the queen and also the game well done Hello James Pandra, you are with us. How long till uh, title Tuesday? Okay, go, 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 go. We want you to do well today in title Tuesday. We are all rooting for you. And I will also join in your stream and cheer for you. Every 
everybody, today James Flander is playing Title Tuesday, so we will all follow him and cheer for him. Come on, go James Flander, make us proud. So this is a composition by Wurzburg in 1914 and white to play and made in three moves. No, don't even say that. Of course we believe in you. You will do well. White to play and made in three moves. So these pawns are going this side. Good luck James Hunter. see you in your stream later. Rook f7, h6, h7 and h6. So rook f7, let's say I play g3. When you play rook h7, I will play king f6. Rook f7, rook d7, rook d6. I see, so I have to play d6, I guess. Rook f7, I have to play d6. Or anyway, I can play g3 and try to run with king f6 after rook d7. Yes, not so simple. And we have to consider all the pawn moves in every line. That's the that's the difficult part. Because black has four pawns, we have to consider all each of these pawns. Okay, d6 then rook d f5. So I have to play after rook f7 g3.
rook c5, king d6, king f7. Rook c5, king d6, king f7. Okay, so for rook c5, I have to play d5. Bishop d1, if b pawn moves, then mate on d7, if g pawn moves, mate on f7 with bishop. And what about d6 and f6? Rook f7. Rook f5, rook 7, f6. But even after that, king goes to c7. Okay, so rook f7, g3. Um, if this check, I will go king d6. If you go back again, I will play d6, I guess. And it will not be made in 3. Where is my music? D6, bishop b3 and rook e5 or f6, bishop g4 and rook e5. Well done. Well done, homeless on Wi-Fi. So the idea here is that we have to play bishop d1. And now? It looks like the bishop was on the best square with these um, discovered checks, but we have to take it away. Now, black has four choices. If he plays b4, it opens this diagonal. So we play bishop a4 and followed by bishop d7 is a checkmate. If he plays this side, g3, we go towards bishop h5 followed by bishop f7 and that is a mate. And if he plays after bishop d1, one of these pawns, so let's say um, d6, bishop b3 again. And now this square is taken, which was the running square for black. And next move, no matter, we play this and it will be a checkmate. And if black plays f6, again the same idea, bishop b3. And this time, next move, we will play rook e5, rook f5 e5 and it will be a mate well done Okay, so uh, two, three positions more and then I will stop for today. <laughs> Just lucky, of course not. You found the answer with a lot of work. Why to play and win? A study by Evrinov in 1962. Title Tuesday, I think, yes, it is in 30 40 minutes. I will not play today. So this is a white to play and win.
I have two more examples to share and then I will have my dinner and then I will cheer for James Blunder for his title Tuesday. King f6 to d8, he will also go to d6, so king f6, king f4, king e7, and you can't play king d7 because of bishop b5, and if you go king d8, king d6. What's for dinner? It's one of my favorite Indian dish today. It's called Pau Bhaji. It is like um, bread with butter, uh, toasted bread, and we have spicy curry to eat with it. It is um, one of the famous Indian dishes. And we also put cheese on the curry. <laughs> yes, it is very tasty. So it's basically a curry which is made up of spices and vegetables. And on that we put cheese and we eat it with toasted bread. And with some lemon and onion. Yes, it is healthy <laughs> because it is made up of uh, vegetables, all vegetables together. Thank you for following Find Tricky Lizard. <laughs> this is what it is called. You can Google it. Any plans for a stream tonight? No, not tonight. That's all my plan. I'm going to finish uh, this soon, then have my dinner. And then um, follow James Thunder and also work on some uh, some chess. Okay, so now here uh, we have to start taking the king to the queen side. B six. B six then. He can no he cannot take because of c7 he can just take here okay so the solution is to start with the king king f6 king f4 king e7 
and king e5. Now this is going to be a tricky square for the king because of this diagonal. And here we take the bishop. And wins. So again the important is that we place the black king on this diagonal and then when black plays on e5 then we take the bishop and then we promote and give this skewer and win the queen. There is one a tragic comedy. What if he goes king e4? One moment. Here, if he goes king e4, then we can play king d8 and take this pawn. Because now the king cannot go to d6. Yes. So we have next a tragic comedy. A king g1, queen, no, no queens, <laughs> rook d8, knight e4, pawn son, a2, b3, c2, c5, f2, g3, h2. No, this. King g7, rook c7, bishop e5, pawn son, h6, g6. White to play. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So pawns are equal. Pawns are equal. And black is in a passive position and taking advantage of his opponent's uh, natural desire to demonstrate any kind of activity. White puts a slight trap. So white puts a trap, you see. And he plays here a3. And now black in the game black falls for it. Black plays bishop b2 to attack this pawn. <laughs> Look how white is playing so tricky. He just made black tempted to attack this pawn. And after black played bishop b2 attacking this pawn very innocently white just played knight d6. And now the threat is to trap this rook with a fork and if black takes this knight his rook is trapped anyway and white won this game in just one move after bishop b to knight d6. Otherwise it was not so easy for white to win. Even though white has a space advantage, it's not so easy uh, to convert it. So this is kind of tricks you use in blitz games. <laughs> and now the last one for tonight king g3 rooks on g6 a6 king h8 Rook c8, rook d8, white pawns, f3, g2, h5, black pawns, g7, h6, d2, wow, no, d3. White to play and, and, and draw.
so this pawn is going here and just two moves away from queening <laughs> yes to go <laughs> you're funny rook a7 then i will play d2 if you take here um i can play rook g8 i guess then you can take and play on d7 one moment yeah yeah it's pinned and anyway if you take i can take with the rook and it's a check so no time to defend it white's position here appears to be resignable the further advance of the deep pawn which can't be stopped will cost him a whole rook the only chance for counterplay is rook a7, d2, rook g7, but it fails due to rook g8, yes. But despite all this, white managed to save this game. Yes, this is crazy. in g4 then um, d2 where are you going with the king tom <laughs> king f5 but it's it's too slow right he can make a queen looks like you're inspired by nigel short's game but we are already in the end game to make the king march <laughs> yes Florin is playing like magnus and perpetual i see but i think king will just run off to e7 and rook e6 check king d7 I think black can check on f8 or something. Yeah, but we don't have to worry about that king march. We can just make a queen. So the Magnus in our chat has spoken. So the move is rook g d6. Now black cannot take it because we take and the pawn is stopped. So black plays a d2 and we just play rook c6. If queens then we take rook d1. Now the threat is rook d2 or also rook c8 followed by rook d2. And now if black moves the rook let's say rook b8 we just make a draw like this. And there is no way out of it. What can black do? White is threatening rook d2. Yes, yeah, so if if black plays something like king h7, correct move is to play rook d2, not rook c8 because of rook d6. That is why this is the threat. He renews the threat without let up at every move. White saved a position that was already beyond despair. And imagine black playing this game almost winning and next move white makes a draw it's like the game we saw yesterday in the middle game series <laughs> there was a funny story that the player playing white went got up during his game and went on to call his friend to show the beautiful idea he found and then his opponent found a reputation and won the game just like that 
answering brilliancy with brilliancy <laughs> all right it is time for us to stop here Whom shall we raid? Okay, James Plunder has started streaming, so let's raid him. So thank you everybody for joining and have a good day and have a good night. These end games uh, take a lot of energy, <laughs> studying them, quite exhausting. But also, these examples were so beautiful, and I enjoy, I enjoyed going through them, and also sharing them with you. Thank you so much for all your support, and I love to have you all here in the chat and to discuss with you. It's it's a pleasure. See you guys, see you in James Plunder chat. Bye bye.